Ready? Yeah. Next up, we have Jeff Gosnomed Kirsch with the haiku, the haiku of security, uh, complex, complexity through simplicity. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so like Steve said, this is the haiku of security, complexity through simplicity. I'm Jeff Ghost Nomad Kirsch. Mostly I'm Ghost Nomad, but sometimes I have to be professional, so I go by Jeff. I tried to be in computer science, and my professor and I didn't see eye to eye because I probably said something to him that I shouldn't early on. So I went into accounting, and please don't throw chairs at me, but I ended up as an auditor. <laughs> we do have another auditor in the room. But I do audit technology, so I'm not entirely bad, maybe, hopefully. And sometimes I blog about haiku. Um, at least I try. Blinking lights are fun. They tell me t traffic flows through. Packet, blink, packet, ode to the router. So what is haiku? In short, it's a traditional Japanese poem, and I don't know everything about haiku. I've done a little research, so hopefully I can convey this properly. And it's defined by having 17 on. Now that's a Japanese term. We translate that to syllables. It doesn't always translate perfectly, as you'll see in a little bit. Usually, you see it broken up into stanzas of five syllables, seven and five. In the traditional Japanese format, they use the kanji, so it was a single line straight down. But in, in the more modern versions of haiku, they use the 575 structure. And it contains a seasonal word. Now, if you've read any of my haiku, they typically don't contain a seasonal word, so I'm not exactly haiku. But seasonal words are things like birds and flowers and animals and just things that convey a specific season or, or time of year. <laughs> so Boshu was a, a famous haikuist, more recent, and I say more recent loosely because it's still very old, and he wrote this famous old pond. In Japanese, it's furu, furu iki ya kawazu tobikomu mizu no oto. You go through that, furu iki ya ka wa zu to bi komu. So it's five seven. And then mizu no oto, five seven five. We translate that into English, you get old pond, old pond, a frog leaps in, a frog leaps in, water sound. So we have two, four, three. So it doesn't exactly translate the Japanese on to the American syllable. So the haiku, as defined by the American Haiku Society, yes, there is a Haiku Society of America, <laughs> basically says what I said before. And again, the important thing is that it has a season and conveys human nature. Now, senreyu is probably more what I write. The key word here is that it doesn't have to contain a seasonal word. So it follows the same structure, but it doesn't have that seasonal word. I still call mine haiku, but you know I'm taking that loosely. Again, by the American Haiku Society. My dog. My dog sleeps all day. She sleeps from morning to night. She is just lazy. Ghost Nomad Jr., and that's my oldest son. He wrote that. Um, he's actually taking after me much to my wife's uh, dismay. So the daily IT haiku. So I, I, I kind of decided to do this project. Started on a whim. It's become a passion each day. And I learn day by day. And yes, that is a senryu. For me, it started in second grade with Mrs. Turk. I remember this very vividly. My mom was a room mother. And she took a giant piece of paper, painted a giant picture of a uh, bonsai tree, and put it on the door to our room. And we each had to come up with a haiku to put on the door. 
and I absolutely hated it. I just, I could not get it. I'm like, what the, uh, uh. It just, it wouldn't work for me. So that's when I first learned of haiku. Fast forward many years. I was sitting on a swing set with my kids when I wrote my first IT haiku. And as part of the project, I thought, well, you know what? I'm gonna try to do this every day. And I thought small. I thought, okay, I'm gonna do this 30 days. Within an hour, I thought, well, maybe 60 days I'll try to do this. And then I think by the end of the day I was up to 90, but by the next day I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna try to do one every day for a year. See if I can challenge myself to do that. Now if you followed me, there have been a few days where I have missed, whether it's been a hectic day or I just fell asleep too early, um, but I've tried to make up for it. Of course my family thought I was crazy when I said I was gonna do this, and I think they still think I'm crazy. <laughs> Um, but I will say they did participate on New Year's Eve. I got it in my head that I wanted to do one haiku every hour for 24 hours on New Year's Day. My son talked me into doing one haiku every half hour for 24 hours. So I called it 48 and 24, and for New Year's Day, I released every half hour uh, an original haiku uh, on my website. And this was my first haiku that I wrote. It was called DEF CON Haiku because it was July 31st, DEF CON was going on. Swinging with my kids, could not make it to DEF CON, priceless moments good. And actually because of the word swing set, this is a true haiku because it has a seasonal word. And here's my editorial staff. <laughs> They're the ones that help me. Uh, Ghost Nomad Jr. is the one on top obviously because he's the oldest. Um, but all four of them and my wife sat around the kitchen table and came up with the 48 and 24. So I try to learn something new every day. I think if you don't want to get bored with what you do, this is an extremely important thing. Try to learn something new every day. It doesn't have to be something important, but something new. And so I try to do that. And I find, I found that haiku helps me communicate. So we'll kind of get into that a little more, but that's really one of the things I've learned. It's simplicity and discipline conveys complexity. And for anyone with ADHD, this is extremely important. So um, simplicity and discipline. Make it easy. Ethernet wall jack. Located in the lobby. <laughs> Pen testers love this. Animals. Animals are cool. Some run fast and some run slow. They give me knowledge. And that's Ghost Nomad Jr. So complexity. Let's talk about complexity first. Information technology and security are complex. There's a lot to learn. Nobody's an expert in everything. But it, everything seems extremely complex. Of course, what isn't complex? Now, as I said, I got an accounting degree. And I don't know if anyone has ever tried to do a, a um, consolidated financial statement. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But if you know anything about consolidated financial statements, you know that when one company buys another, you have this thing called goodwill. It's the amount that you pay over what the book says they're worth. And when you consolidate financial statements, that means I own you, but we have two financial statements, but we got to report it as one because the SEC says we have to. You have to get rid of that goodwill. So there's complexity in accounting. Uh, well, I wouldn't say doctors are complex, would you? I mean, they don't have to know about every piece of the body and what it does. Well, yeah, but all those pieces interact. Yeah. So, yeah, so there's complexity in doctors. I mean, probably everything has complexity. PKI is complex. I mean, you talk about certificate authority, confidentiality, encryption, integrity, registration authority, authentication, non-repudiation. I mean, these are just words and you see them on paper and you've got 20 page white papers on PKI. So PKI is complex, but does it have to be? How do we communicate complexity? Well, I'm an auditor, as I said before, Please don't throw the empty chairs. And auditors write reports. 
That's what we do. I know you think we just like to come in and be mean, if you've ever been audited, but we do have to write reports and that takes up a lot of our time. So who reads the reports? Well, if you're a public company, the audit committee reads it. Senior management, we hope, reads it because there's important stuff. The technology owners, we hope they read it too, even though they may not like it. And of course, if you're a regulated organization, the external regulators are gonna read it, and we know they do read it. But most people aren't techies. So I have to write reports for non-technical people. Of course, when I write a report for non-technical people, that means when I give it to the technical people, they get really angry at me because it doesn't make sense. That's not my technology, that's not what it does. Well, I understand that it doesn't seem like that's your technology, but when you have to explain it to those people I talked about before, that's how your technology looks. So as people in technology, do you think you communicate with non-technical people? Absolutely. You have to deal with management. And just because you're a manager of technology doesn't mean you understand the technology you're managing. End users, we know how well they love technology. And of course, lines of businesses. Now, you may find technical people in those groups, but most of the time you're gonna be dealing with very non-technical people. And you're gonna to wanna to be communicating very techno technical concepts. So where's the breakdown in all of this communication? Well, I think a lot of times we mistake a lack of understanding for a lack of interest. You know, you go in to do a talk to your management or whatever and you have all this nice stuff and you start reading it and about two to three minutes into your, your talk, their eyes glaze over and you know you've lost them. And, and you kind of look at them and you're, you get frustrated like, you should, you should like this, you should enjoy this, this is technology. You know, you get frustrated and you think, oh, they don't care about me anymore. When actually they just, they don't understand what you're saying. It's not a lack of interest, it's a lack of understanding. Just think about a visit to your doctor. I mean, doctors throw out terms all the time that you have no idea what they're talking about. I mean, what if your doctor said that you have a deficit in your dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex? How many people would know what that is? <laughs> so yeah, I mean, you're sitting there and you're like, what? What do you mean? So you want them to break it down into plain English. How many times do you say that? Give it to me, doc, in plain English. So the important thing is to understand your audience. You have to really know who you're talking to, what their interests are, what their motivation is. And I know you've heard this before, but as your mother always said, repetition is good. Failure to understand your audience means you will fail to communicate. That's probably the biggest key of why you fail when you're trying to communicate something. And whether it's something not that important or something extremely important, you have to make sure that you don't fail because it's not their failure, it's your failure. So you need to do your homework. You need to get into the heads of the people you're gonna be talking to. Understand what motivates them. If you're talking to senior level management, they're motivated by what is best for the organization to generate revenue? And so you have to understand how you fit into that concept. So again, get into your audience's head. You have to really understand what they're thinking and target your communication to that, that mode. And when you succeed at communicating, you've increased your chances for success. When they understand what you're saying, then you can read success as money. You're gonna get funding. You're gonna get what you need to do what you've just told them you want to do. Complexity is simple. Anybody can throw up a slide with a ton of information on it. Anybody can sit there and throw out technical terms that nobody understands. And a lot of times, it's so simple to be complex that we end up hiding behind that complexity. We use that complexity to protect ourselves because we think if we make it too simple, then anybody can do what we do. And so we, we got that wall of fear, that wall of complexity, 
blocks you, but it's so simple to just throw stuff out that's complex. Answers abound. Laptop holds answers. Is data unencrypted? Breach, must notify. So now we're gonna talk about simplicity. We've gone through complexity. Now we're gonna talk about how to make things a little more simple. Simplicity is complex. It is extremely difficult to simplify what your message is. Because in order to simplify, you have to really understand through and through what you're talking about. Like I said, to truly communicate a complex idea in simple terms, you really must understand the idea. You have to not only do your homework on your audience, you have to do your homework on what you're gonna talk about. Because you may think you know everything you need, but you might not. And so you might miss those important things when you simplify it. So do your homework, understand what you're talking about. Even if you think you've known it for years, just go back, check it out, make sure you really do, and really think about it. Some of the best engineering isn't based in the original design, it's, but it's in simplifying the design for efficiency. Again, it's easy to build something, a widget, with 50 moving parts. And if 35 of those moving parts really don't do anything except look fancy and, and make it look good, then you really haven't done anything significant. But when you go in and you actually study that design and understand which parts you can get rid of, what you don't need, then you've simplified it and you've made it even more valuable because it's efficient and it does what it was originally intended to do. So again, why are we talking about haiku? I mean, simplicity, complexity, uh, I'm kind of losing it here. Well, how much can be said in 17 syllables? I mean, it doesn't seem like very much. At best, you have 17 words, if they're each a syllable. At worst, if you get those hard words, it's only three. So you are really constrained as to what you can say in a haiku to convey what your message is. Again, whimsical haiku is really easy. I mean, I can just sit down and write a bunch of words on a piece of paper and call it haiku. And it doesn't need to make sense. I mean, we've all, I don't know if anyone has seen the, the um, t-shirt on Think Geek, but the last goat talks about haiku is easy, and then it says refrigerator. <laughs> I mean, it, it doesn't make sense. So again, it's easy to just put words to paper, but you have to really think about what those words are. 30, 29 haiku. My wife thinks I'm crazy, so here is 30. And the title is 30 in hexadecimal, if you didn't catch that. So I wanted to communicate an idea and share IT and information security. And I decided I wanted to try to do that using haiku, again, because it's short and sweet. It gets to the point. No more wait. Waiting. Loading now. Instant on would be real nice. Boot from solid state. So how do we do this? How do we simplify? How do, you, how do we get to make sure we have all the information? Well, it's easy. First, start by listing the key points. Read what you're doing, understand it, and then pull out those key points that you think you really need to convey to your audience. And then you need to go through and find the techie speak. Whether you're talking about IT or, or anything else, find that, that techie speak, because that's where you're gonna lose your audience. And translate that techie speak into the common language. And I don't just mean in English, I mean the common language of the people you're gonna be talking to. So if, you, if you're going to talk to senior level, understand what their language is and make it to that. If you're talking to management, lower management, um, you know, translate it into what they know best. Sometimes that's dollars, sometimes that's man hours, but, but really try to convey it to the, in the way that your audience thinks. But you can't stop there. You need to reteach yourself. Again, relearn what you think you already know. Because I can almost guarantee 
I'm not gonna say 100%, that you're gonna find something that you didn't catch the first time or the second time or the hundredth time. You're gonna see that one point in there that you say, oh, I get it. I see where that fits in. So it's important to try to reteach yourself before you try to go teach somebody else. Because most likely, if you don't reteach yourself, it's gonna run off the rails. And try to learn something new. Don't just stop with what you know, but try to expand on what you know. Try to go outside of your comfort zone because if you're gonna ask somebody to learn about what you're talking about, maybe you need to learn something even more than what you're talking about. And the most important part of this is to make it part of your routine. Make it something you do on a daily basis because it's easy to fall out of, of, of line when you're not doing it all the time. You have to really make it part of your routine so that when you have to do it again and again, it becomes natural, it's not a process. You don't have to go through the pains of, of doing it over and over again. Haiku is meant to convey in a brief format. Again, 17 syllables, real short, real sweet. Twitter does the same thing. You have 140 characters to communicate. Now sure, you can get into these big Twitter debates where you run on and on and on over posts and posts, but if you come in in the middle of that, if you're a person who hasn't seen the first 25 tweets, you don't have the context. So, on, you know, so trying to fit it into 140 characters is really tough, especially when you're trying to consolidate. So one thing you need to do, especially on Twitter, is look at the words you're using and understand, do those words add value to what I'm saying? If you're saying that, the, a lot in your tweets, you're losing a lot of characters. I think I said 140 words, 140 characters. You're losing a lot of characters on meaningless words. Um, I began, well does anybody really care if I began? What you really care about is the me. So don't start things with I began or, or, or meaningless words or, or phrases because in essence you're just trying to convey a simple idea you're not necessarily trying to convey um, the full story. That's for other things. Now, that's again when you're trying to convey ideas over Twitter, not necessarily when you're just bantering over Twitter. And instant messaging is a, is a similar medium. A lot, not very many people use email anymore to communicate in the office. A lot of people try to use instant messenger, at least people that I know. And instant messenger doesn't provide, again, a lot of, a lot of space to communicate and a lot of times, again, you start losing context because I say, I start to say something and then you go to interject, but I'm still talking, so I miss what you say and then you miss what I say and it just turns into a huge mess. And so making sure that you're concise and make your message important right, right, right up front makes using instant messaging a lot easier. So it's not just about haiku. It's about, you know, look at all those different communications that we do that we have to convey an idea quickly and succinctly uh, without losing our audience. And we can use those types of, of mediums to help teach us how to communicate better when we go into talk to senior management. We don't want to ramble along a lot. We just want to get straight to the point. Service maps. Want to know the path? Send out the packets each time. Increment the count. Therefore, you need to be concise in your communication. Again, make sure every word that you use means something and conveys an idea to your audience. Remove those unnecessary thoughts. Those just add complexity. And because we're talking about simplicity, we need to get rid of the complexity. Acronyms add complexity. We all have our own speak, we all have our own acronyms that mean something to us, but most of the time the audience that you're speaking to doesn't know your acronyms if they're not in your group. And so acronyms add complexity. It's the same thing with haiku. If you try to take an acronym and put it in haiku, does your audience know what that acronym is? So the CISA, Certified Information Systems Auditor, which I am, everybody calls CISA in the, in the business. That's two syllables. But if you don't know that it's CISA, you'll say C-I-S-A. Well, you've just burned four syllables when you thought you only burned two. 
and you've broken the rules which you were trying to stay within. So acronyms add complexity not only in what you're saying, but if you're trying to, to communicate in other formats, acronyms all of a sudden lose their meaning and mess things up. So use those words that mean, mean something, that have meaning, that actually convey something to your audience. Again, make sure you understand what your audience is thinking and what they want to hear. So we've, we've taken complexity, we've simplified it. But in simplification, we don't want to lose the passion of what we're trying to say. When you try to convey something, you still want to have the passion because you want people to buy in that you know what you're talking about, that what you're proposing is really going to work. So you can't lose the passion through the simplification process. So that's why it's really important to understand what you're talking about, understand what you know, and use that emotion to convey what you're talking about. It may be in simplistic terms, but you're still excited. You're still ready to go. Don't lose the passion. And as part of don't lose the passion, it's really important that you're honest with yourself before you're honest with others. If you can't admit what you don't know and what you do know, then you can't teach somebody what they need to know. So at the same time, don't lose that passion and be honest with yourself. OK. I'm going to challenge you guys in a couple minutes, so I'm going to give you some time to think about this. I want you to think about Nauticon, what you've heard today, what you've done this week. And I'm going to challenge you guys to come up with a haiku. But I'm going to give you some more information before I do that. Give you a couple minutes, prepare something. So again, you need 575, five, do it in syllables, 17 syllables, or, and, and, and we'll see what you can do. So where to find me? If you're on Twitter, I'm at Ghost Nomad. I'm there pretty much every day, unless I'm working with the kids or something. I may have some downtimes, but I try to at least get on there to uh, tweet when my haiku is posted and various other things that I do. You can also email me at ghostnomad at ghostnomad.com. If you have any questions about haiku, like I said, I'm not an expert, but we can chat. Um, if you have any questions about simplification. I may not be the expert, but I'm more, willing, more than willing to chat. So feel free to hit me up on Twitter or email me. And you can find where I'm at on the web, ghostnomad.com. That'll get you to all, all my writing. And it-haiku.com will take you to the daily IT haiku project, where you can find all the haiku that I've done. Mostly it's Senryu, as we talked about earlier. All right, so let's haiku. I'm going to challenge you, but I'm going to give you a couple more minutes. Take a deep breath. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln gave the Gettysburg Address. Four score and seven years ago. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Don't worry. This is very complex. There's a lot of words here. So again, complexity. So let's try to simplify the Gettysburg Address. Several years ago, Nation found in liberty. Continue freedom. Those are the main points that I pulled out of the Gettysburg Address. It may not be exactly right, but that's the haiku that I came up with on the Gettysburg Address. We took a full page, full screen of words, reduced it to that. All right. Anybody want to go first? Okay. Why the drive to me? Cleveland comp and not comp. Or in high school terms. Very good. <laughs> I should have mentioned this before. You saw me up here going like this. The best friend in haiku is your hand. Because you can you can figure out well, as you're as you're figuring it, you just make your fingers go. Five, seven, five. So use your hand if you need to. Don't be afraid. I won't laugh. You may laugh at me, but that's okay. An Air Force check mark. The executive treatment. The voice. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Very good.
Chris? Presentation info, still be this high too, don't still matter the box. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently living and breathing makes me a bot. I think I just got heckled in haiku form. <laughs> Anyone else want to try? It's real simple. My eight-year-old can do it. You can too. <laughs> I can pull the picture back up. It'll make you feel better. No? All right. Well, again, I hope I, hope I uh, gave you a different way to, oh, yep, in 80. That's right, that's right. <laughs> Anyone else? Anybody else? Come on, I know you want to. I can see it burning in your face. As you're, I want to haiku. I can do this. You can heckle me through haiku. I mean, James has already started it, so. <laughs> All right. Well, again, I hope that uh, I hope that I showed you a different way to look at things. And again, if you want to check out the haiku, um, I have reached as of today 330 haiku. Um, so my original goal was 365. I'm hoping to hit 500 before the end of the year. And I may do some more special projects that I did on New Year's Day. My wife was probably going to kill me if I try to do one every 15 minutes. But I guess that would be the next logical approach. So thanks for coming. And I hope you learned something new. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. You, you were talking about PKI earlier. I really want to see you put an SSL certificate into my <laughs> Oh, that's a challenge. I'll have, to, I'll have to go home and look at that one. I'll have to see if I can do that. Any other questions? No? All right. Thanks again.